Now, if you are an RC beginner, you're brand new to the hobby and you are considering running LiPo batteries, you may actually already run nickel metal hydride batteries, but you're considering ditching these and going for a LiPo pack, is it a wise choice? Because you do hear a lot of horror stories out there and a lot of people say that this happens. And here it goes. Whoa. When in actual fact, LiPo fires are extremely rare. When you look after a LiPo pack properly, it will look after you. Let's get into today's video. Welcome back to the channel. So I thought it'd be a good idea to put together a very brief and basic guide uh, when it actually comes to lithium polymer batteries. Now, I do get asked questions, uh, mainly how do, you, how do you actually charge a LiPo? How do you store your LiPos? Uh, do they catch fire like we see on the other YouTube videos? Hopefully today we're going to be able to answer some of those questions. Uh, this, this video is actually intended for people who are quite new to the hobby. Now, if you are one of my subscribers or you have followed my channel and you are experienced in the RC world, feel free to skip this video because it is going to be quite basic. Uh, we're going to cover uh, the correct procedure, how to actually charge a LiPo, how to store a LiPo, uh, what to do if things go wrong or one of the LiPo packs goes bad. We're going to cover these things today. Uh, and hopefully this will help those of you out there who are looking to buy your first LiPo pack or potentially have just gone and purchased a ready to run, which does come with a LiPo included in the box. And all you want to do is know how to care for it properly. Now, when I first started in RC roughly about 20 years ago now, nickel metal hydride packs were the go to when it comes to electric RC. Times have obviously changed. The cost of LiPo packs has actually come down considerably, uh, especially when it comes to LiPo chargers as well. The overall cost of owning a LiPo setup has definitely decreased. Now, one of the good things about using uh, lithium polymer batteries compared to nickel metal hydride batteries is the fact that they will offer you more power and also longer run times. Now, as long as you follow the correct procedure when it comes to charging and maintaining LiPo batteries, they will be extremely safe. Uh, there is always a risk that they can catch fire, especially in an impact. If one of the cells was to get damaged, there is a very high chance that a LiPo pack will catch fire. Now, when it comes to modern day RC, I really do think that nickel metal hydride packs will be disappearing soon. I think lithium polymer packs have really started to take over in the RC world. Now, due to the fact that they are extremely affordable these days, they really are uh, they really are the choice for most people. Now, I think what we'll do is discuss some of the pros and cons about LiPo batteries. We'll start with the pros first of all. They are much lighter in weight and they can almost be in any shape or size. Now, LiPo batteries do also offer you uh, much higher capacities compared to nickel metal hydride batteries, and they can also store more energy. Uh, when it comes to discharge rates, they do offer you a lot higher discharge rates compared to uh, their the nickel metal hydride uh, counterparts, meaning that LiPo batteries do pack more of a punch. Now, it's not all good. There are some cons that we need to talk about as well. Now, LiPo batteries do tend to have a little bit of a shorter lifespan. Um, I'd like to say that you'll be good for sort of maybe 100 to 300 cycles, give or take. Uh, the sensitive chemistry can lead to fire if the battery actually gets punctured. And uh, also special care is needed when charging and discharging and storing and all of that sort of good stuff. Uh, nickel metal hydride batteries can tend to be a little bit more forgiving, but obviously lipo, pa uh, lipo packs uh, are the more powerful option, which is why they're very, uh, very popular when it comes to modern day RC. Now, let's talk about some of the pros when it comes to nickel metal hydride batteries. Uh, they do tend to offer you slightly longer lifespan than LiPos. Uh, it's difficult to put an exact number on it, but I'd like to say 500 cycles plus, uh, especially from what I can remember back in the day when I used to run nickel metal hydride packs. I do remember getting, you know, a lot of use out of a single pack, which was absolutely great. Now, they're not as sensitive and they don't usually pose a fire risk uh, nickel metal hydride batteries are a lot more forgiving when charging, also when in use. Uh, they won't tend to catch fire as quickly 
uh, and they're not as sensitive as a lipo pack now not only that when it comes to chargers and storing these things they are a lot more simple as well overall nickel metal hydride packs are potentially the best option for a beginner but i think everybody that's actually getting into rc does want to go for the best and more powerful option which of course is lithium polymer batteries now when it comes to the cons they are much heavier they are limited on size as well uh, the overall capacity is sometimes a little bit less than what you would see on a lipo pack and overall they are less efficient as well now nickel metal hydride packs do actually offer lower discharge rates and uh, they do actually lack a little bit of punch as well compared to their uh, lithium polymer counterparts so we are going to move on to voltage cell count and capacity now this is potentially where it may get a little bit confusing now i'm going to put as much information on the screen as i possibly can so hopefully that will help you out and help you to understand uh, this part of the video now a normal lipo cell has a voltage of 3.7 volts now if we take a look at this 2s pack this is a 7.4 volt 2S LiPo, which means two single cells uh, at 3.7 volts would give us our 7.4 volts, which is what you would see on a 2S pack. Now the battery is actually wired in series, so the two cells are added together, which gives you the 7.4 volts. This is why you actually hear people say 2S and 3S uh, and so on. It literally means two cells in series. And it's also pretty much the same with the 3S pack as well. Uh, you know, 3.7 volts times 3 is 11.1 .1 volts, which is what you would find on a normal 3S pack. Now, if you've already plugged your lithium polymer battery into a charger, you may actually be able to see the individual voltages for each cell. You may be slightly worried because they will be showing 4.2 volts on each cell at a full charge. Now, this is normal. A fully charged LiPo cell will reach 4.2 volts and if you've got a 2s pack each individual cell will be 4.2 volts giving you 8.4 volts on a full charge now if you remember i did actually mention 3.7 volts now that is usually the resting voltage for a normal lipo cell now we're going to move on to capacity then now when it comes to capacity all this is is a measure of how much power the battery can actually hold you can sort of consider it to be like a fuel tank in a car this is how much power the actual pack will hold and provide to you when you are running your RC model. Now, when it comes to LiPo packs, the typical unit of measure here is milliamp hours. Now, all this is saying is how much drain can actually be put on the battery to discharge it in one single hour. Now, let's use this tiny little 1000 milliamp 2S LiPo that you see here. This is 1000 milliamps. Now, this would equal one amp hour. Now, the capacity does actually determine how long you can actually run on a single charge. Now, going for a smaller pack will obviously give you less runtime and going for a much larger pack uh, such as this 5500 milliamp that you see here will obviously give you a lot more runtime. Now when it comes to RC cars, I have noticed that the average uh, is potentially 4000 to sort of 5500. I think that is the sort of sweet spot when it comes to RC cars. It's going to give you uh, a nice amount of time uh, when it comes to bashing. Anything below 4000 milliamps, you may find that you are replacing batteries quite soon. So 4,000 to sort of 5,000, 5,500 milliamps is definitely something you want to be going for when it comes to RC cars. Now, especially in recent times, there are companies out there that are making huge capacity batteries. We can use Gens Ace as an example. They are making some huge capacity batteries at the moment, but the downside to this is they are absolutely huge and you will have to factor in whether or not they will actually fit into your battery tray or into your model. Now let's move on to discharge rate because this is a very common question. What is the best discharge rate to actually go for? Is it 20C, 30C, 50C, 100C? What is the best thing to go for? How do you know what is, uh, how do you know what is the ideal discharge rate that you actually need for your system? Let's talk about that now. Now, when it comes to C rating, all it really means is a measure of how fast the battery can be discharged uh, without actually harming the battery. Now, there is a really simple way of working out the max power draw for a lithium polymer pack. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to use this Avonic battery as an example. Uh, this is a 5500 milliamp uh, 50C 
battery pack. Now, what we're going to do is actually times, uh, we're going to times 5.5 by 50, and that is going to give us the max amps or the max amount of power that we can actually pull from this LiPo pack. Now, once we've actually worked it out, we do get about 275 amps of continuous power that can be drawn safely from this battery pack. Now that is well within this battery's capabilities, going any higher or pulling any higher amps than this thing can actually handle. Worst case is actually gonna make this thing deteriorate and even worse than that, it could actually catch fire. Now, a lot of the time these days, some batteries actually have two C ratings. You will find that there is potentially a burst rating as well, a burst C rating as well. Now, essentially all that means is a really big increase of power that that battery can actually provide when you are accelerating your vehicle. So what is the best pack to go for then when it comes down to C rating? What is gonna actually work for you when it comes to your individual needs? Now, it really does depend on how much power your system is gonna be pulling. Let's say, for example, you're running a 60 amp brushless system. Now, would a 20C battery potentially be a viable option or is it going to catch fire like we spoke about? Or do you need something, uh, you know, potentially a much higher C rating such as this uh, 50C battery? What's the best thing to go for? Now, let's say, for example, you were going for a model that was uh, that actually required 60 amps uh, to power it correctly and then potentially a burst rating of you know, let's say 100 amps. Now, would something such as this uh, this 2S uh, 30C battery be sufficient? Well, let's work that out now. So what we'll do is actually work out how much power we can pull from this 2S LiPo pack. Uh, it's a 30C pack, it is 2S and it is 5200 milliamps. Now, if we do the same calculation that we did earlier, we'll do 30 times 5.2 and it gives us uh, 156 amps. Now, if we're running a 60 amp system, we are well within uh, the limits of this battery. If we're running a 120 amp system, we are more than likely going to be well within the limits of this battery. Now, 156 amps is more than enough for a pretty mild to high end brushless system. Uh, it could definitely do the job absolutely fine. Now, you do have to consider would a 30C, 20 to 30C battery potentially be good for your needs because they will be a little bit cheaper as well. Nine times out of 10, they absolutely will. Going for something such as this, which is obviously a much higher C rating, this is a 50C battery, is potentially ideal if you're doing speed runs and you, you know, you're using a very powerful uh, brushless system which is gonna be pulling a lot of amps Something such as this will be your ideal choice. If you're going for you know, pretty much a normal average model, and you can try and work out how many amps or you know what sort of power you're going to be pulling from the system using the calculation that I showed you. Something with a slightly lower discharge is more than likely going to be absolutely fine for your needs. Now there are other factors involved when it comes to uh, the overall power draw from your system. Uh, you have to factor in your gearing, the size of your tires, uh, the actual weight of the truck itself. Your overall power output or the power draw may actually be a little bit higher than the number that we actually worked out, which is why it's always a good idea to go for a slightly higher discharge rating than you, than you may actually need. The one thing I would say though, for most applications, a 20 to 30C battery will more than likely be perfect for you. So what we're gonna do is actually charge this 2200 milliamp zippy compact lipo that you see here this is uh, we're going to charge at 1c which is going to be 2.2 amps and we're going to use my lipo safe bag as you see here very simple all we're going to do is put the lipo into the bag we're going to leave enough space for the wires to hang out the side and then we're going to go ahead and plug this in so as you can see we have got the balance lead plugged in we've also got the main leads plugged in to the xt60 connector there now as you can see the charger is actually set to nickel metal hydride batteries we're going to change that now to lithium polymer batteries or lipo okay we're going to press start so 2.2 amps is already selected because that was actually the last battery that I charged on this. But if you need to adjust, uh, if you need to adjust your uh, amps, you can go ahead and do that now. So we're going to use 2.2. Uh, cell count is 2S, which is 7.4 volts. But again, if you need to increase this or decrease this, feel free to do so. As you can see, this charger goes all the way up to 6S. 
So we go back to 2S and then we're going to hold the uh, hold the start button and that will begin to do a battery check which will uh, make sure that everything is connected properly. If it's not, it will tell you that there is a break in the line. But not only that, it will also tell you if there is a low voltage on one of the cells and it won't actually charge the battery. But in this case, everything seems to be fine. So we'll hit start and there you go. That is pretty much it. Now this battery pack is actually fully charged. As you can see, it is already displaying 8.4 volts. And as you can see, with the balance lead plugged in, we are pretty much sitting on 4.2 volts, which again, like I said earlier in the video, is pretty much what your uh, two single cells uh, at full capacity will add up to. Uh, two 4.2 volt cells fully charged will give you 8.4 volts. Now guys, you must never leave a charging LiPo unattended. I really can't stress that enough. If you go, if you walk away and leave it unattended and it was to catch fire, you could potentially burn your whole house down. So please just be careful when it comes to charging your LiPo packs. Now, we're not gonna go into it in too much detail today, but there are other ways of charging a LiPo pack as well, such as parallel charging. Now, I would advise against parallel charging because there's no exact way for the charger to measure each and every cell that you are charging. It will use an overall voltage uh, to actually charge your uh, packs in parallel. And I've been against parallel charging for years. Now, if you want to see how to parallel charge packs, leave a comment down below. We'll potentially do a more in-depth advanced uh, LiPo guide. If you want to actually see how it's done, I'd always adv advise against it because you can, spend, you can buy a lot of charges now, which could potentially charge, you know, sort of four packs at once or two packs at once. You've got dual charges and quad charges and all that sort of stuff, which is why I'd advise against parallel charging. It is something you can do, but I would definitely say don't do it. So let's talk very briefly about LiPo storage. So you have just ran your model. You're not intending to run it again for potentially a few months. Uh, you really shouldn't leave your uh, LiPo battery pack fully charged because this will degrade it and it will reduce its lifespan. Uh, the best thing to do is actually use the storage mode on your charger. Uh, which will keep the cells sat at 3.8 volts, uh, which is long-term storage, and they will be absolutely fine for months to come. Now, when it comes to storage of your lithium polymer batteries, many people do it different ways. Some people like to use a metal tin. Some people like to buy many lipo, pack, uh, lipo pouches and store them in those. Uh, there's really no wrong way or right way of doing it. You just have to bear in mind that if these things were to catch fire, you want them to be in a place where they're not going to cause too much damage. So we're going to leave the video there today. I really hope you enjoyed this very brief guide when it comes to lipo packs. If there's anything I missed out, feel free, leave a comment down below and let me know. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the latest RC content. And if you enjoyed this guide today and you want to see more guides similar to this in the future, be sure to let me know in the comment section down below. We're going to leave the video there today. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you again soon on the next one. Take care.